Ah, uh, yes, the million dollar question for many of you guys who watch my channel is how do I think like a programmer, right? Like how do professional software developers, people who are getting paid to do this think versus how I think? What is the difference there? What is the gap? Well, many people will think that there is some secret sauce taught at MIT or Stanford that they're not teaching the general population and that's the thing you're missing. But the truth is it's not really like that at all. And in fact, there are some tangible ways to think more like a programmer. And if you utilize these strategies, let's call them, or ways to think like a programmer, it will make your life easier and it will set you on a better path to learn to code better to get that first job. And that's exactly what I wanna cover in this video. I wanna base it more off of my experience of seeing many people go from not knowing much to actually becoming software developers, a lot of the clients who I work with in my mentorship program, and even to just distill it down to its very basics. So without any further ado, let's just kind of dive right in here. To get to the core of what it means to think like a programmer, you first have to really get crystal clear about what programming is. Because I think people think you're just like writing code all the time and that's all it is. Really what being a programmer is, is you're writing code to solve a problem. That's the, that's the simple as you can really get, right? So the problem could be very small or it could be very big, right? So for example, if you wanna take something that everybody pretty much knows, like Facebook, for example, was at one point, it didn't exist, right? Mark Zuckerberg was sitting in a dorm room and he thought, wow, if I get people to connect, that'd be really cool. And I think that's a problem. So he solved that problem by creating a large software application, a very complex one. Or maybe it was something simpler than that, but still complex. Let's say Google back in the day, they saw that all the email clients out there weren't very good. So they're like, let's go ahead and create our own email client. And they created Gmail, something that didn't exist, they thought could be really good, could solve a lot of people's problems and a bunch of software developers coded that up. So when you hear that you have to be a good problem solver, that's where this idea comes from. That's where this buzzword comes from because ultimately as a software developer, you're solving some sort of problem. You're creating a solution using code. So with that all being said here, I really wanna introduce this idea of thinking more methodically, right? So if you're gonna solve problems, you have to think more methodically, which just basically means you have more structure to how you think. You're more orderly in your thoughts. And I think the best way to demonstrate this for if this doesn't really make sense is to think about a scientist and adopt what I would call a scientist mindset when it comes to programming. So scientists, you know, go back to your high school days when you were learning about chemistry, when you were in the lab and you were mixing elements and you were recording everything. That's basically the way that you want to be as a software developer, just like if a scientist had a problem, right? To say they, they wanted to create gold from just random elements in the periodic table, which is a really cool idea, by the way, you should definitely do this. <laughs> Hint, it's not possible. So say you wanted to do that. You'd set up an experiment where you mix certain amounts of two elements and you try to make gold. Now, if that didn't work, you'd examine and try to figure out why didn't that work? When I mix nitrogen and oxygen together, obviously that didn't work. Why didn't that work? Maybe you'd come up with another hypothesis. Maybe you change the amounts, the, the chemical amounts and try to mix it again and see what happened. And you keep doing that over and over and over again. And the scientific method is a good analog to software development and thinking more methodically, right? So a lot of people when they get into this, they struggle with learning to code because they learn the syntax, but when it comes to the actual problem solving part of it, they don't have an ordered and structured way of thinking about things. So that's the first thing I really wanna plant in your head as far as thinking more like a programmer. Now, before we go on to my next point here, I just wanna briefly stop and say, if you've enjoyed this video thus far, please go ahead and go down and smash that like button below. Also, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I cover all things self-taught programmer related. So definitely go down there and smash the subscribe button. Also make sure to hit the bell icon so you get notifications anytime I put out a new video. Okay, so if you understand that thinking like a programmer means being a good problem solver and thinking methodically, well, from there then the next thing that I noticed that really separates a lot of what I call amateurs, like people who are just struggling to learn to code, they're watching tutorials, not really getting it, to those who are starting to get traction and is really starting to understand how to think more like a programmer, it's really about breaking down problems, like big problems, into smaller problems, right? So you bring, break down something big into its smaller little requisite parts. And this is called decomposition. Just like when a leaf falls from a tree and it dies, it breaks down into its smallest parts, its elements, its cells. That's the same way that you want to approach problem solving. I've worked with so many people when I assign them a really hard project to do or a really hard problem to solve, the most people just get overwhelmed by it, right? They see that there's a really hard problem, it's a really big project, they get overwhelmed, and they're like, I don't even know what to do. 
Well, what they're the problem with them is they're seeing the problem as a whole. They're seeing the project as in its whole in its entirety, and they're unable to break that down into its smallest parts. So when you have a problem, when you have an application, a project that you want to build, instead of seeing it as this big problem you have to solve and not really knowing what to do, you want to methodically break that down into its requisite parts. And this is what programmers do really, really well. They don't see an application. They see, some, they see something, a piece of software that does a bunch of stuff and hey, maybe it has a user interface. So if you're going to build a, let's say, an expense tracker, right? You want to keep track of your expenses on a day-to-day -day basis. It's going to be really simple. You have to think to yourself, not only from a user interface perspective, okay? So if you're going to build the UI, the look and feel of it, you have to think, like, what are all the components going to be on the screen? Right, so maybe you're going to have some inputs where you can input some information. You have to figure out in your head, okay, where are they going to go, and then how are you going to display that data? They're going to be, is there going to be like a table there? What are the columns in the table going to look like? And how can I delete items from each one of those so that they have to have a delete button? Can I edit each one of those? So you start to think about this. Even if you think about it in your head, you can just sort of see exactly what you need to do, what the user interface is comprised of. So that's sort of the what. Now, each application or project that you're going to do is also going to have an action to it, right? What is it going to do, right? So, for example, your expense tracker application is going to allow a user to create an expense. It's going to allow a user to edit an expense, and it's going to allow a user to delete an expense. Now, maybe you're going to add more than that. Maybe you're going to allow users to log in so we can save that to a database. Maybe, maybe not. But either way, you're kind of deciding everything that your application is going to do. Because once you've broken this down into its requisite parts, then it's a lot easier to not only approach building it, right? So you can go through one by one and sort of either build out the user interface or you can actually start creating the functionality, right? You can actually make the expense tracker create a new expense. But even beyond that, before you start writing any code, you can see the big picture and see all the different parts and see what you maybe want to throw out. And maybe if you are going to build this in a certain way because you see all of the different features that you're going to build. So that's the first thing I've noticed about thinking more like a programmer is programmers are really good about not seeing everything as a whole. They see things as little tiny parts that they can go through one by one and build it out. The last piece of the puzzle when it comes to thinking more like a programmer is by far the most challenging to, I'd say explain, but also the most challenging to actually adapt to your normal thought pattern. The next thing I'm going to show you is really how to think algorithmically. So thinking algorithmically is a fancy way of saying thinking more like a recipe, right? When you create a certain meal, you follow a recipe. That's basically what you do as a programmer. You create a recipe to provide a specific result. Because if I'm going to create chilaquiles, one of my favorite dishes, by the way, definitely recommend it. You know, I know the certain amount of ingredients I have to have, tortilla chips, onions, simmering sauce, to name a few. And I have to cook that in a very specific way. If I don't cook that the exact way, if I turn the temperature on a little too long or I cook it a little too long and the temperature is off or I mix the ingredients at the wrong steps, the wrong intervals, the result I'm going to get is dramatically different from what I want. And so this is really, really important for you guys who are new. And this is really important as well for why you want to start on simpler projects, projects that are easier to do than jumping into some of the harder projects. For example, I assign people when I work with them one on one to do something like a to do app, for example, one of the you know most common applications that you're going to do. But what I'm able to observe when people first start coding is that they often assume that the computer knows what they want to do, right? They can sort of read their mind. Like, hey, when I press a button, I want a, a thing to show up on the screen. I want a little LI, a list item to show up on the screen. And that's one of the problems that you're going to have. Instead of thinking that in order to show something on the screen, I have to access the DOM, I have to create an LI element, I have to add some text into that LI element, you sort of just assume that the computer knows what you want to do. And this is the, the biggest leap. And by the way, all this stuff I'm explaining to you can't really be learned through a lecture. I can't just go through a lecture and say, okay, here's how to think more algorithmically. One of the things you have to do is just go and try to do it. You have to learn the programming language, the syntax better, and it becomes more clear over time how you have to think more in terms of steps, like step-by-step -step process, as opposed to just like, I write some code and it does what I want. Because if you've ever heard this term before, I think I've said it on my channel a few times, the computer is really dumb. So you can write some software to the for the computer to do pretty much anything, by the way. Like pretty much anything that you write and code can be done on a computer. 
But the problem is that the computer doesn't ever really, can't really guess what you're trying to think. And that's where most people get wrong when they start getting into code is that they think that if they learn to the syntax of a programming language that that will be enough to get any outcome they want. But they don't realize that they have to get the exact recipe down for whatever outcome they want, whether it's a to-do app, whether they wanna create a financial trading application. You can actually create bots now that you know trade currency and that sort of thing or trade stocks but you are the director of that. And you have to really break that down into it step by step. So that's where it sort of ties in with decomposition, with thinking more methodically and thinking more algorithmically. Alrighty, so those are my thoughts on how to think more like a programmer. If you enjoyed the video or wanna share your thoughts on how to think more like a programmer, please go down below and leave me a comment. Other than that, if you're interested in working with me in my mentorship program, I will leave details down below in the description of how you can potentially join the program. Other than that, thank you so much as always for watching and peace out everybody.